a lot of background notes and such. Uh, just like all the other topics that we talked about, the way I've kind of framed it is a little bit of notes, a typed out example, and then we dive into the, the one that we're going to work on. Um, previous section, we compared two, two proportions, but if you have more than two proportions that you want to compare, then you might go with a, uh, a chi-square distribution. Uh, there's two ways that, well, two ways that we're going to focus on that deal with chi-square. You have the chi-square test for uh, goodness of fit, and you have, it also, they, they say homogeneity, but they also have the chi-square test for independence. Okay, the the chi-square test for independence applies to two-way tables, so you'll have multiple variables being compared. Right, so that's, um, you know, like if you break up, it, it, and this is specifically related to proportions, it's like if you pose the question, do you like the cafeteria food, and you pose it to each class, right, so freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, you're going to get a yes or a no, assuming that's how you define it. So you would have freshman, sophomore, junior, seniors as one variable, and then the associated yes or no corresponding with that. It creates a contingency table, which we looked at in the probability unit when we talked about conditional po uh, probabilities. So it's just working with tables. Good thing is the, uh, the NumWorks calculator has actually a very nice uh, interface when it comes to chi-square. So, um, so you'll be able to get the numbers and, you know, in a lot more of a, a straightforward way than uh, some of the other hypothesis tests. Right? But I'll just kind of talk you through this a little bit without reading the example. The, the structure of the null and alternative hypotheses could take on um, you know, a different look. Right? One, of, one is, I think, the obvious thing. If you're talking about more than two pro uh, populations, population proportions, then you're probably going to have more things that can be equal to one another. Right. The idea is the null is equality across the board. Right. So each proportion for the population is equal to every other proportion for a population. Now, directly equal, no. But we're saying they're they're close enough that we wouldn't dismiss equality as a possibility. Right. As a strong possibility. Right. The alternative, you you would not want to list out all the different ways in which P1, 2, 3, and 4 can be unequal, because it could be that they're all unequal to each other, or maybe there's one oddball, like uh, P2, 3, and 4 are equal to each other, but not equal to P1, right? Maybe it's P1 and 4 that are equal, P2 and 3 that are equal, but those two sets are not equal to each other. So instead of doing that, we just say the null is not true, right? And to be more specific, I, I prefer to write it as um, at, at least one of the the uh, population proportions is different. All right. So, alternatively to my alternative, I could say at least one p is not equal. All right. So you're just kind of putting a uh, sort of a verbal statement there, as opposed to what we did before with greater than and less than and all that because if you decided you wanted to list all the different ways that p one two three and four could not be equal to each other then you'd have to also incorporate all the greater thans or less than so you could say p one is greater than p two three and four which are equal to one another you know it, it would be a mess so we just make this one statement and it gets us where we need to go, all right? In terms of the, the type of shading for the rejection area, since chi-square is so different from what we've been doing, we take a different approach, so I'll show you that in a minute. And, um, and then the test statistic, the, the p-value and all that stuff. Uh, that, that we're actually just gonna get right from the calculator, right? Because when you're dealing with, uh, with a one-way table, it's not terrible to do it all by hand but a two-way table can be uh, borderline nightmarish. Right. So we have our test statistic formula, observed minus expected squared divided by expected. Right. And I show all the calculations here for this example and, and the p-value, same deal. But like I said, it, it, it can get a little messy. All right. um, so yeah, the rest gets into the, you know, like the p-value relationship to alpha and the conclusion that you would draw. All right, so 
I'm going to take you through an example here. We have an Associated Press report. It was reported that a random sample of 830 stolen cars, of 830 stolen cars, 140 were white, 100 were blue, 270 were red, 230 were black, and 90 other uh, were other colors. Suppose the American Automobile Association, AAA as they are known, reports that 15% of all cars are white, 15% are blue, 35% are red, 30% are black, and 5% are other colors. So we want to conduct a hypothesis test to answer the question, does car color affect the chance that it will be stolen? Use an alpha value of 0.01. Uh, and, and the idea behind this is if the percentages are different from what they should be, right? So uh, the AAA says that these are the percentages. There's no reason to doubt that, right? But if one type, one color car is getting stolen at a disproportionate rate. So, you know, like the old, um, I, I'll call it urban legend, where you say if you, if you have a red car, you're more likely to get pulled over by the cops. You know, so that, that's, that's like old, but you know, back in the day, uh, it was really only the case that sports cars were red. So there was that underlying variable there, the lurking variable. It's like, no, it's not the red cars because like you could have a, a red pickup truck and not get pulled over. It's the sports cars that also happen to be red, All right? Uh, but here they're talking about whether or not they're gonna be stolen. You know, like I, I, don't, I don't have any skin in the game. I, don't, I really don't have an idea, All right? Now, if I'm purchasing a car and I find out that black cars are more likely to be stolen. I might stay away from that color, All right? So we have our observed values. That's gonna be, uh, we had 140, 100, I'll, I'll label it up here, so white, uh, blue, 100, red, 270 black was 230 and other was 90 and the total was two uh oh, sorry uh, 830 i was looking at the wrong thing all right and obviously this is kind of an oversimplification of the concept because um my Honda Pilot, I believe, is, they changed the name. It used to be called Gunmetal Gray, but, you know, they wanted to get the gun out of it, so I forget what they call it now, but it's, it's a form of gray, right? And uh, I'm trying to think, my Civic is some, something celestial. Uh, it's like uh, something blue, but it... it like nebula blue or something like that. I don't know, it's something weird. But it is a form of blue, but the gray, where's the gray? Probably in the others, right? Along with uh, green, yellow, pink. I've only seen one pink car in my life, but it was glorious. So the expected values, those were given in percentages, right? So I'll, I'll note the percents, but it's an apples and oranges comparison. All right, so we have to make an adjustment here. This is 15%, uh, another 15%, 35, thirty, then five, and in theory this should add up to 100%. All right. So what we would need to do is one of two things really convert all of the observed values into percent form or convert all of the percents into uh, actual values out of the 830, right? So chi-square works with counts. Now, in theory, if you, if you put everything over to uh, percent form, you could just look at it as the number out of 100. Out of every 100 cars, this number would be red, this number would be black, and so on. Right, so you could go either way. I'm going to go with modifying the expected values. 
All right, so I'm just gonna do it on the handheld a little quicker. So 15% 0.15 on 830. It's gonna be 124.5. Uh, this would also be 124.5. Uh, 0.35 times 830 to 90.5. Right, uh, 249 should be the 0.3 because that's double the 0.15, but we'll see. I'll just double check. Yep, and then 5%, 830. Uh, so 41.5 now this sum should add up to um, to 830 so 249 times 2 plus 290.5 plus 41.5 and it checks out all right so we got our our values right these are my observed and this is what they should have been all right. I guess I don't need the uh, the 830 to be in the highlight, but uh, we'll just leave it there. All right. So my null hypothesis is that the population proportion for each color is no different from the population proportion of each, of all the other colors. All right. Subscripts are fine. P sub W is equal to P sub blue. I guess I got to put more than just a B there. P sub red and P sub black. All right, alternative is that at least one is different. All right, if your uh, labeling system is not obvious, then either write out the entire word and I kind of feel silly now that I, you know, abbreviated white and red and wrote out the black and the blue. So I'm just going to kind of. Yeah. Otherwise, when you're setting up your table, the, I'm thinking in terms of the AP here, because, you know, if you wrote piece of W, piece of B, piece of e, like I'm going to know what you're talking about, but they, they play dumb. So I would make this, you know, like I would call that W and, you know, whatever abbreviation I'm using. All right, so I leave that up to you as long as it's obvious what it is you're referring to. All right, now we're going to be looking at a chi-square, which is a skewed distribution, specifically skewed to the right. There are never any negative numbers. All right, so it's, it's pinned at the, uh, at the origin but also uh, it, it only lives in the first quadrant, right? The center of the hump is your degrees of freedom. For a chi-square, degrees of freedom is equal to k minus one, right? K represents the number of categories. All right. So I have a total of four categories. That's the four colors. All right, so my degrees of freedom would be equal to three. All right. There's other colors. Oh, other, like other as in other. Yeah, my bad. There are five categories, like I said. Five minus one will give you four. Take care of that in post. All right, so. reminder to myself All right so the shading still corresponds with the alpha value they said to use alpha 0.01 for a chi square it's always right tailed All 
All right, 0.01 with those degrees of freedom, you know, in this case, four. It's only at this moment that I realized that the, uh, the toolbox does not contain chi-squared distribution. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll have to do it through the app. So, I'll just make a note here. This is the critical value, chi-squared. Now, the chi-square symbol, I don't think anybody's ever lost credit for this, but it looks an awful lot like an x-squared. All right, this symbol is, you treat it the same way you treat a t or a z. All right, so whatever number you get here is the number. You don't have to then take the square root of it. All right, so in fact, it's really kind of like a, it's like, like a mullet. You know, it's a, like business in the front, party in the back. You know, so you got the, you know, perfect line, line segment and then the little, little jazzy one coming through down the line. All right, so that's the chi-square symbol. But no matter how much effort I put into making it look appropriate, it still looks to people like an x squared. All right, so this is the chi-square distribution. And that is chi, it's a chi-square. What kind of square? A chi-square. All right, it's just the shorthand notation power of two. All right, so if we didn't have a calculator, we would have to do some serious computation. I keep grabbing the handheld as if that's something you can see. Uh, we go to inference, under test, you'll see that there's a chi-square option. So you have goodness of fit, homogeneity, and independence. All right, the first one is for a one-way table, which is what we created. All right. So a single variable in the associated counts. If there were a second variable, then we would be looking at homogeneity and then independence. You could also, I mean, they get a little particular when it comes to chi-square. I, I have no idea why. They're, they're associating the homogeneity with the second type of test. It's actually the case that the goodness of fit is also a test of homogeneity, right? Because a subset of goodness of fit would be that all the percentages are equal to one another or close to equal. So when I say goodness of fit, I'm, I'm basically asking myself, how well do my observed outcomes fit the distribution of what is expected for the population, right? So it's basically saying, does this array of values fit this model, right? Now, if I were looking, uh, I have an example somewhere where it's um, you roll a die 600 times, and these are your outcomes. You get 75, for, 75 ones, uh, 132 s, and so on. Now, in theory, it should all be roughly equal. So the homogeneity would be the instance where the probabilities are roughly equal to one another, right? So it's talking about consistency. But we're doing goodness of fit according to NumWorks. They give you a little table here where you could put your observed values and your expected values, so just go type those in. So this is one feature that I really like because, you know, if you think about a lot of the other statistical analyses that we've done, it involved bouncing back and forth from the statistics app to the inference app to the regression app. This one is all one-stop shopping, which is really nice. All right, so I get my values in. Uh, it automatically computed degrees of freedom for me, which is really nice. It noticed that I only put in five values, and those five values must be related to the five different categories. It doesn't know the context, but it does know that if there are five values in the, uh, the observed expected columns, 
then it must be that there are five categories. All right, so five minus one is four. 0.01 is the, the value we're going with. 0.05 is our default, but they told us in this case, go to next. It gives us the chi-square test statistic. All right, so the chi-square test statistic, again, is the sum of O minus E squared over E. All right. So one thing that the AP allows for in the, in the instance of chi-square is not you don't have to show every single computation. In theory, what you would have to do, especially since, I mean, we only have five categories and it would be enough work regardless, but um, if there were like 20 categories, you'd be, you spend all your time on just one problem. Uh, so what, what's happening here is we're finding the difference between each of the observed values and the corresponding ex expected values. So the first calculation would be 140, so I'll just do like one or two of them. It would be 140 minus 124.5 squared over 124.5. Then we would move on to the next one, the next one, the next one, and we would end up with 90 minus uh, 41.5 squared over 41.5. Right. So we would carry out the summation, but NumWorks did it for us. And then if you use the TI, the TI calculator would do it for you too. Right. So we're looking at 66.328. All right, the p-value, so again, this is test statistic. The p-value, 1.351 times 10 to the negative 13. But in terms of the notation, because remember we talked about this in the last part of the unit, actually every part of the unit, we want to make the statement probability that chi squared, because it's always right tailed, pro uh, probability chi squared is greater than 66.328. And just so you know, like I slip all the time and call it chi squared, just it feels right, but it is, it is chi squared. So even if I say it, it's like x squared, like it, it, it's still just chi squared. All right, and then we draw our conclusion because we have all the information we need. I'm going to go to next. It, I think, has, yeah, they plotted the test, uh, I'm sorry, the critical value, but they didn't say what the number was. All right, so as far as I know, and I'll, I'll research this and see if there's a, a, a function that I'm missing, but Bottom line is this is one of those instances where you're probably going to have to use the tables that they give us for the AP. Um, yeah, because I, I know even with the TI calculators, it, it wouldn't give the critical value. So I had to write a program that would compute it and install it on every computer. I'm sure I'm sure I could do that here, computer uh, calculator. I'm sure I could do it here, but I think the table approach just might be a little easier. So let me just show you that real quick. I don't know what I just hit. Okay. So here's the chi-square distribution. For critical values, it's just asking you to identify the crossing or the intersection between the tail probability, so the alpha value, and whatever the critical, uh, whatever the degrees of freedom are. So we had four degrees of freedom at the 0.01 level, so I would just identify 0.01, four degrees of freedom, and just shoot across that row and slide down that column until I got that intersection. All right, so it's actually pretty easy. It's so it's 13.28. It's really not that difficult to do it with the other ones, also. You know, like uh, the Z tables and the Z uh, the T tables. Uh, this one is actually probably the easiest one to do using a table, so.
you know, because there's no uncertainty there. When you're dealing with um, T test, Z test, it could be left tailed, right tailed, it could be two tailed. Here it's always going to be the one tailed situation. So 13.28. All right. They want the well-labeled diagram. They want your test statistic cal uh, calculation conclusion and p-value calculation conclusion, and then the overall conclusion for the uh, for the hypothesis test. Now we structure our conclusions the same way for every single hypothesis test. The first sentence always addresses the null. The set, anything after that has to answer the question that's being posed. All right. So. Does car color affect the chance that it'll be stolen? All right, so there is sufficient evidence to reject the claim that there is no difference. among the population proportions sorry I'm going to do a little resize here of stolen cars at the 0.01 significance level therefore we can support the uh, support the claim it's not really a claim but um, so maybe I won't say it that way uh, therefore we can say that car color affects whether or not it will be stolen I'll just say color effects, right? Okay. Well, reorganize this in a minute, but sufficient evidence to reject the claim that there is no difference among population proportions of stolen cars at the 0.01 level, right? And that that's a nice way of saying. Uh, well, would be pretty wordy. Uh, reject the claim that the population proportion of white cars is the same as the population proportion of red cars, is the same as the population proportion of blue cars, black cars, and other cars at the 0.01 level. So th this is a definitely a more concise way of making that statement. Um, grammar, you know, like if you could kind of attend to that that's probably a good thing but I've never uh, never seen anybody lose credit because they uh, you know that they got the tenses wrong or something like that you know that's it's really not the focus of it right? and as you can see based off of the number of typos that I've made in my packets that it's not something that I really emphasize either All right so yeah this is definitely uh, different in terms of the, the, the computations, I, I would call them like pseudo comp, uh, computations, maybe like fake computations, because we didn't really compute anything. Right? The calculator did it. We just dressed up the problems to make it seem like we did it. Right? Especially, like I said, we, ha we only had five categories. If I had, in the next problem, there's 12 categories. Right? That, that's a lot of computation to show when that's really not the, the point of emphasis for the problem. Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to, yeah, I, you saw how long that one took, so I'm going to ask you to have a look at number three, and then we'll, we'll go over that one tomorrow, because I know there's a bunch of people out also between both classes.